outlines like the empowering local partners to prevent violent extremism in the United States. But now in New Jersey and other areas, they're offering a thousand dollars for every person you turn in who owns guns. And uh, alt-market.com originally wrote this article, uh, excellent uh, piece, breaking it down. And we have a clip of the video. This is going on all over the country, but uh, here's New Jersey. Play that clip. It's a TV ad. No more guns. 877-NW-K-GUNS. Hi, I'm Mayor Cory Booker, and I, like so many in our city, are just saying enough. We have had a significant reduction in shootings in our city, but it is still too many. There are a small group of people in our city that think they can walk around with guns. It is unacceptable. But we can't just wish this will stop. We can't just hope this will stop. We as individuals have to do something about it. So we have a program in our city right now that's completely anonymous, and we will give you cash, $1,000, to anyone who calls our anonymous tip line. Give us the information about who is carrying a gun. And if we don't even have to have a conviction, if we arrest that individual and simply get that gun off the streets, you call back, get your second group of digits, go to a bank or send somebody to a bank, and they will give you $1,000 in cash, no question okay. asked. Now, uh, again, he made the news a year ago announcing that. Now they've got the TV ads on television. Waving money around. What about people carrying guns to protect themselves? Who own businesses? Who don't want to get knocked on the head? I carry a gun. See, I don't live in your town, pal. But you know what? I've had people move here. Like the carpet cleaner 12, 13 years ago, saw a shotgun before I had children on the rack in my studio at my home. And the guy flipped out and ran off and called the cops on me. Well, tried to. And then I called and said, did, you, did they call the cops on me? I called the cleaner place. They said, sir, we stopped him. We understand you're allowed to have that. But uh, you, know, you probably shouldn't have it out in plain view. Get out of Texas. Just get out. We're on the march. The Empire. Okay, we are now here at the midway point in this worldwide broadcast. I'm going to have completely open phones and news in the third hour uh, today. The toll-free number to join us, if you want to go ahead and get lined up, I'd love to hear from you on any of the issues we've mentioned, uh, any of the topics we've uh, raised, or any questions or comments you've got out of left field, right field, whatever the case is, I'd love to hear from you, 800 Two five nine ninety two thirty one. I want to continue with our focus on this Iran situation because it's definitely escalating. And you heard Colonel Schaefer last hour that it's never been closer to war than it is now, but that he thinks it'll be an October surprise. Uh, and that more of this is saber rattling, but once it kicks off, it could lead to a wider regional war with the Chinese involved and World War Three. That's why we've got the article up at InfoWars.com right now. Alert Iran crisis headed for World War III. Doesn't mean we can't turn it around. It's like if I got in the car today and started driving to Dallas, I could turn around before I got there. But it's headed that direction. It's like telling some young teenager who's robbing houses and using hard drugs, you're headed to the penitentiary or dead. You can still turn it around. <sighs> but before we go to our next guest on this subject, Wayne Madsen, before I introduce uh, our, our guest, I want to remind you that we have the book, The Deliberate Dumbing Down of America, back in print. It's been out of print for over a year, and that original book is out of print forever. This is a uh, updated and uh, abridged uh, book. It's not the size of the Dallas phone book. It's more the size of the Waco phone book or the uh, Lakeway phone book to use some uh, Texas parlance. So it is available at InfoWars.com. All educators need this to understand why you're not allowed to teach, uh, why our children are taught to regurgitate. They're trained. They're not educated to be true free thinkers. Uh, excellent book available at InfoWars.com by the consummate uh, insider from a Skull and Bones family and the former head of policy department of education available at InfoWars.com. We also have the Alex Jones Everything Special, all 18 of my DVDs. And we're going to stop offering this at the end of the month. It was so popular, we're extending it because it's such a great tool. Normally $360 for all 18 of my films. 
Fall of the Republic, Endgame, Terror Storm, Obama Deception, Martial Law, all of them. And a free citizen rule book and InfoWars and in the Fed bumper stickers, ninety nine ninety five, and the profit we do make funds my producers and writers and researchers and graphics people and typo specialist. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, but uh, again, I'm just joking around. I'm, I'm always ty doing typos myself, so we're trying to work on never having those. But I see a lot of typos on um, even so-called mainstream media because I think word processors uh, are just rife with it. The point is you fund our truly alternative media operation uh, when you buy the books, the videos, the DVDs, the T-shirts, and you get tools, more importantly, that are key in waking people up. We couldn't have built this without your support. So I want to thank all of you for being supporters of PrisonPlanet.tv. We have 15-day free trial running right now as well. We're doing the nightly news. It's really uh, finding its legs and uh, growing, and uh, it will soon uh, exit the beta testing uh, format. So again, we want to thank all of you that are PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers as well. And lastly, I have now lost 27 pounds. And we're going to do some before and after. I should have done the before photos. But we got plenty of video of me. 27 pounds in, it's not even six weeks. It'll be six weeks Thursday. 27 pounds. And I've done it with exercise, cutting back a little bit on what I was eating. But mainly when I'm really starving, I just have a tangy tangerine uh, or I have some of the uh, longevity whey powder. Uh, mixed with real raw milk. Uh, and I mean, it's incredible. My breakfast is at like 5 a.m. I got up today at actually 4 a.m. I couldn't sleep. It was a tangy tangerine and then a cup of coffee. And then I uh, all I've had so far then for my breakfast at about 10.30 was a glass of whole milk, raw milk uh, with uh, some whey powder. And then I'm going to have another tangy tangerine, uh, mineral uh, vitamin drink, and then eat eat a, a, a lunch that's pretty much my dinner. Then I'll have another tangy tangerine tonight, and it's because my body needed the minerals and the vitamins and kept wanting food. I mean, this stuff really works, folks. This, I mean, and it's not even sold as a weight loss deal. That's what Ben Fuchs, the pharmacist, told me to, to use it for, and uh, it's really working. I mean, I'm starving, bam, tangy tangerine, or bam, pollen burst, uh, bam, rebound. You go to InfoWarsTeam.com. And you can buy the products or sign up and get a discount when you order them or become a distributor in your area and help fund the info war in yourself and the free market. You know, most revolutionaries rob banks and things. So we don't do that. We just promote products we believe in. So uh, go find out and get the special deals on longevity products at InfoWarsTeam.com. There's also banners uh, on InfoWars.com and find out how awesome the entire line of products are. And by the way, I'm not kidding. I've got another... 33 pounds to lose. I'm going down to about 190 or so. I'm going down. Like the Led Zeppelin song. Going down, going down now, going down to Chicago. We ought to go out with that, John Harmon. I know you've got it in the computer. All right, that's enough. Let's go to Wayne Madsen until 5 after next hour. Wayne Madsen Report, uh, dot com. He, of course, worked with the National Security Agency. He also worked uh, with uh, major corporations uh, on computer systems. I can't go over his entire uh, bio here. He was in submarine, anti-submarine warfare in the Navy before that. And he's written for some of the biggest publications in the country, like the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Philadelphia Inquirer, Houston Chronicle, Miami Herald, WayneMadsonReport.com uh, is where he uh, you can find all of his great work. And he joins us to give us his take on Iran, this spectrum, this cornucopia of things that are happening. Sir, break that down for us and then uh, you know, give us your take on other things that are happening geopolitically right now, Wayne Madsen. Okay, Alex. Well, I actually happen to have spoken to an old friend of mine uh, the other evening who uh, was a very big advisor on U.S. Uh, policy in Iran, uh, Individual speaks fluent Farsi, the language of Iran, uh, as well as Urdu, the major language of Pakistan, and Dari, which is spoken in Afghanistan. And, and his uh, take on things was he is uh, very much afraid that the U.S. will participate in some sort of military action before the election. <clears throat> now, my feeling on this is, talking to some other people, is what will that entail? Will that be 
overt military action, or will it be covert U.S. support for a Anglo-Israeli and possibly French attack on Iran? That, that uh, avoids the issue of uh, the body bags and coffins coming back to Dover Air Force Base during the election year, but also uh, basically disarms those Republican critics of Obama who say he's not doing enough uh, against Iran. So he can have basically have his cake and eat it, too. Uh, there, there are some real problems uh, with this, however. And I, I, I add the French in there. Uh, that's a caveat. Nicolas Sarkozy is also running for re-election. And, but in his case, he may see uh, French support for military attack as something that can benefit him. He's very uh, far down in the polls, and he may try to play that nationalistic uh, card in France, against, uh, especially against uh, Marine Le Pen, who's running for president from his right. So uh, the British, though, you can pretty much count them in. The Israelis count them in. Uh, the U.S. may play a role, but it will be one where Obama can say we support the action, but look, no U.S. military troops are involved. You know, uh, the other day Obama announced a, uh, a, a new strategy for the U.S. militarily. He's shifting focus from the Middle East to East Asia, and um, uh, he, he met with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and, and the uh, Chief of Staff of the, uh, of the Army. Uh, got, this is a Pentagon plan. He's on board with it. And that's just a public announcement of what China already knows. So-called yeah. U.S. bases, our country's been taken over, being built now, even in Australia. That's why the president of China, as you know, a month ago said, prepare for war with the United States. I mean, I mean, that was in major headlines. This is getting crazy. Well, and here's the problem. China and two of our allies in, in East Asia, South Korea and Japan, have already announced they're not going to abide. Uh, by these sanctions against uh, Iranian oil shipments, um, which are going to be kicking in soon. They've announced they're not going to participate. They both, uh, all three countries, China, Japan, and South Korea, rely heavily on Iranian uh, oil exports. And what they get in, re what Iran gets in return for, uh, for that is, is refined uh, gasoline, because the Iranian uh, uh, refining uh, capacity has really been hurt by uh, U.S. sanctions. Of course, we know that Dick Cheney's company, Halliburton, uh, tried to get in there and, uh, and, and, and improve on those capabilities. But uh, Yeah, they no, they had it under Bush set up where only yeah. they were allowed to sell them the equipment. So just sh shows that they're always lecturing us about me for war, you're with the Iranians. Meanwhile, they're, they're in business with them. But, but specifically, Wayne, looking at this right now, what do you make of the Israeli, U.S., British fleet steaming back into the Strait of Hormuz? What do you make of the Iranians a week ago saying, you better not come back through there. This is your final warning. Uh, what do you make of Iran talking about asymmetrical warfare in Tel Aviv and New York? Why are they saber rattling so much more now? Well, they're, they're having to placate the war hawks uh, in, in Washington, London, uh, uh, Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, and, and Paris. Uh, and, and also, uh, people like Ahmadinejad has to placate his war hawks in Iran. Uh, but I think there was a little bit of a monkey wrench thrown into uh, these plans when the U.S. Navy rescued about a half dozen or so, or uh, about a dozen um, uh, Iranian fishermen who had been captured by Somali pirates. Now, the U.S. Navy and the Iranian Navy and also the Iranian Revolutionary Guard 